Good evening, church. I pray all is well. I pray that your faith have failed you not. Christ Jesus coming soon. Our Lord and Savior is closer than he ever have been, even than when we first believed. And I pray this, I pray your heart been being made one with his heart. And I pray that you've been seeking his presence. In this life, there's many trials. There's many tests that come against our faith. That he who believes in Christ shall endure to the end. Because he's faithful to finish what he started. And church, let's remember. It's time for us to repent For the kingdom of heaven Is at hand And we're not waiting for the end time to get here Because the end Is Now Yes church We're not waiting for the end time to get here Because the end Is Now Good evening, brothers and sisters. Good evening, brothers and sisters. I pray all is well. I pray that the grace of the Lord been strengthening you. I pray that his peace been giving you revelation of his glory. I pray that his joy been conforming you more to his righteousness and that joy been causing you to chase more righteousness because of the peace that come through his presence. I pray that you've been renewed. And in all things, you've been going to find our Lord. Okay. Um, so be encouraged, church. Be encouraged because our Lord, our Lord love us greatly. And he will help us, help us through every pain, every situation, every trial, every broken area. But not alone because he's with us in it. He, he's with us in it. For the Lord prophesied and said, I am with you even to the end of this age and church right now he is with us even to the end of this age through every trial that we face daily okay church i have a word for you um it's a heavy meal and um excuse me it'll be a blessing to you but before we get into the word of the lord let's pray Bless your holy name, Lord. Bless your holy name, Lord. Bless your name. Lord God Almighty, we repent of our sins right now, Lord. Consume us right now. Take over us right now, Lord. Give us a new perspective, Lord. Give us a revelation of your glory that will bring us closer to your heart because we know you, Lord. Lord, I pray for an increased hunger for your word. We pray for an increased hunger for your word, an increased hunger for your righteousness, an increased hungry for your, hunger for your presence, Lord. For Lord, you spoken and said it's not good for man to live out. Matter of fact, Lord, you said it's not for man to live off bread alone, Lord, but man should live off every word that comes from God. Well, Lord Jesus, you are the word of God. 
And we can't live off the physical things of this world, but we have to live on you because you are the word of life. Or you said, Lord, whoever takes part in you shall never die, Lord. And Lord, we don't want to die. We want to live eternally with you dwelling in your presence, beholding your glory forever. Lord, let us behold your glory right now through the soundness of your word. We pray that the Holy Spirit would just shape us right now, Lord. We pray that he would purge the areas in our heart that are heavy, that are broken, that are confused, need clarity need freedom and need obedience Lord we pray that your word will produce all things for us because you is everything and then you are all things held together so Lord hold us together by your word and your presence today Lord through your spirit Lord Lord we need We need you. We can't live without you, Lord. Please help us right now. Please teach us right now, Lord. Please show us the way in you, Lord. And may you forever be glorified, Lord. May we never leave your side, Lord. May we find rest in your bosoms, Lord. May we find rest as if we were laying our head on your chest, Lord, saying, keep me from all evil. Lord, keep us from evil, Lord. Wrap us in, the arm, wrap us in your arms, Lord. As you speak your word today, Lord, Lord, let us feel the warmness of your touch, Lord that we might obey your will and not sin against you, Lord, because we want to please your heart, Lord. Lord, have your way today, Lord. Expose the truth today, Lord, that we might not be the same no more, Lord. Bless your holy name, Lord. And we thank you for all that you do. And all that you bring. And all that you pour out, Lord God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, brothers and sisters, let's get into this word. Let's get into this word, okay? Now, we all know about the story of Noah, right? How the Lord had told Noah to build an ark, right? God had spoke to Noah and spoke, he spoke to Noah and told Noah something that it would take great faith to believe. And as God spoke to Noah, Noah believed what God said. So Noah began to build the ark. Now we and, and it was in a time where no one has seen it, seen it rain. So Noah had to believe. It took great faith to believe what the Lord had told him. 
But Noah took God at his word, trusted God with him, trusted God that God knows all things, that when God says something, he means it. Okay. And so Noah built the ark and started building the ark, him and his family, despite what everybody else had thought. Okay. Now, in the times of Noah, everybody else was drinking. They was giving it to marriage. They was going on about their daily life while Noah was building the ark. Man. Church, we, need to, we know today that that ark is Christ Jesus. That we know today that ark is Christ Jesus. Okay. And the Lord have prophesied pertaining to this time in this last hour, uh, before, uh, in this last hour that we end, right? A few years before he returned, he have spoken in this last hour what it would be like before his return, right? And church, we have to make a decision because we, we got a choice to make because God give us a choice of free will. We either going to be like the people in no time You either going to be like the people in Noah time, don't believe and be going on about your daily life. You know what? Going on about your daily, daily life, being consumed in the matters and the concerns of this world. When God telling us. We should be. Making sure that we are in that ark. Man. OK, making sure that we are covered in the blood of Christ Jesus. Make sure that our salvation is secure because we have truly obeyed the gospel and walk in obedience with the gospel. Because we living in a times just as Noah did, because the Lord Christ Jesus is coming soon. Destruction is coming up on this world soon. So with destruction coming soon, Jesus coming to judge this world. Will you be in that ark when this destruction take place? Will your faith have secured you in a testimony of Christ Jesus because you have believed what he has said? OK, because notice now, notice God gave Noah a word and Noah was building the ark. Noah could have easily looked at what the world was doing and been like, man, God, look at what they doing. Right. Look how they are drinking and giving to marriage. Look how they enjoying the things of this world. And I'm standing here building this ark. But Noah did not have his eyes fixed on, the, on this world, but he had his eyes fixed on the word of God. Jesus. He didn't have his eyes fixed on what the world was doing, but he had his eyes fixed on what God had said to him. God, I mean, Noah, remember that God gave him a word to build his ark because I am from coming. I am coming to judge these people from the unrighteous and evil and the violence. What they are doing right now, church, the Lord is grieved over the violence, the abortion, the abomination of, 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 of the sexual immorality all around the world. The murders of the Lord is grieved by all of this and the Lord will judge all this unrighteousness. As it was so in the time, the Lord violence filled the land and it would judge like so today because violence filling the land. The Lord Jesus is soon to do to come and judge all the unrighteous. So Noah was not concerned on what the people, what the, what the people in the world was doing, but he was concerned on what God has said to him. What God has said to him by his words, by the Lord's words. So, church, we can't be concerned on what the world doing, paying attention, looking to at what the world doing, how they're drinking and giving to marriage, how they enjoying the lust of this world. But we need to focus on what the Lord have said to us. And church, the Lord have said that we need to obey the gospel. That I have given you a great commission. To love thy God with all thy heart, mind, body, and soul, and love thy neighbor as thyself. Go out and make disciples, what the Lord has said. Man. 
the Lord said, your focus needs to be on the word that I have given you that I am coming soon. I am coming soon. Who will be that faithful and wise servant doing what I have instructed them to do? Church, this is very serious. Because right now we are living in a paradigm as the same as Noah. Violence is filling in. Evil is filling in land. Lawlessness is abounding. The great tribulation is coming. Do we think that the Lord is not going to come and judge all of this? I hope we I hope that we have not fallen asleep and fallen into a place where we think that the Lord would not judge all these things. OK. He will judge all those who have been unrighteous and those who have encouraged people to be unrighteous. Church, when we live rebellious against God and cause people to stumble, we actually encourage them to live an unrighteous lifestyle. And as, a, and as a result, the Lord will deal with us severely because we know the truth. So church, in this hour, we are in the times of Noah. Will we have the faith like Noah have, had? Will we have that faith that no matter what the world say, no matter what they doing, we're we going to be steadfast on what the Lord has said to us, Jesus. We ain't going to deviate. We ain't going to turn. We're going to keep pursuing the face of the Lord. We're going to keep seeking him because he is the ark of safety that will keep us safe from the wrath of God. Man. This is very important, church. Because the Lord said, behold, I am coming quickly. Behold, I am coming quickly. Okay, now the Lord transitioned. The Lord um, had woke me up in a uh, in a vision, and and this is another this is the second time this has happened. The Lord woke me up in a vision. On I'm in a vision, on and, and I'm moving around, and I see people in shackles, right? And the Lord showing a man. The Lord showing a man digging a hole in the wall, right? <laughs> so you got people holding people captive and you got a man digging a hole in the wall knows that knows a way to escape. Okay. The only way to, to escape destruction, the only way to escape everything that is about to come into this world is to have faith in Christ Jesus because that faith will cause you to enter the kingdom of heaven and that faith will cause you to endure the trials that lies ahead and the trials that we face daily okay so I'm in this vision and I see people holding people captive people shackled and they said watch him he know a way to escape and I see this man digging a hole in the wall which is escape route So as I come out of the vision, later on that day, the Holy Spirit starts speaking heavy. Okay. Notice that the people was in the shackles and it was a man. Um, it was a hole in the wall. So the man was like, he, he reaching out to the wall, like digging a hole in the wall. Right. He seen a hole in the wall. Right. Man. Now, whenever somebody are in shackles, then they are being held captive. Church, this world is going into captivity. Okay. Right now we are living in a time where it is all about one world government. We are living at the time of the second coming of Christ Jesus. And the Lord Jesus prophesied that majority of this world would go into captivity by one world government. And all those that are all those names who are not written in the Lamb Book of Life shall be held captive because they did not love the truth. Okay. These are the times that we're living in. And the Lord had showed me the man digging a hole in the wall was revealing uh, an Ezekiel, an Ezekiel uh, 12, an Ezekiel 12. 
The Lord took me to Ezekiel 12 and what he showed in the vision mimic Ezekiel 12. Okay. God had the man of God Ezekiel uh, walk through the city, grab his belonging, walk before everybody, dig a hole in the wall and to let them know to be assigned to them, to let them know to let them know uh, about what is going to happen to them. Because see, God, God, they, they was finna be judged because they was being a rebellious people. Right now, church, this is a G Ezekiel generation where many people are rebelling against God and removing God out of society. But the time different between back then and now is this time what is going on right now, this world is going into captivity by one world government. And if you do not love the truth then your soul will be lost because only loving the truth will save your soul. And that truth is Christ Jesus who saved man through the sacrifice that he have made on the cross. Okay. So the Lord showed a vision that mimicked Ezekiel 12 with people being held captive and the man of God was digging a hole in the wall. Church, the Lord is prophesying right now. Thus says the Lord, our God, hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church and that this world right now is going into captivity and all those who do not love the truth shall be deceived because they did not believe in the Christ, believe in Christ Jesus. The testimony of Christ Jesus is the only way you will not be deceived and be held captive by the demonic oppression that is finna come up on this world. Okay. For in the book of Revelation, it said uh, uh, three unclean spirits came out of the mouth of the beast, the, the Antichrist and the false prophet. Frauds came out of their mouth, which is unclean spirits. So right now you got right now unclean spirit that is coming up on this world coming up on this world through false prophets and many will be deceived because they was not secure in christ jesus their name was not written in the lamb book of life why because they did not love the truth but they had pleasure and unrighteousness by conforming to this world just like in the times of noah people got swept away because they did not believe the testimony of what god have said God gave Noah a word. Noah believed that word. Everybody else was drinking and giving it to Mary. Church, let this not be us today. Let us not be conforming to this world and fall asleep and not be watching to see that the Lord is coming. Because the Lord said, blessed is the man that watches and stay awake. So I won't. So when I return, I won't see his shame and his nakedness. Well, the only way to watch is to be sober. And the only way to be sober is to not conform to this world, but conform to righteousness because your mind is being transformed in the testimony of Christ Jesus. OK. This is very important, church. Thus says the Lord. In the book of Ezekiel, in the book of Ezekiel uh, 12. Um, the, they, uh, um, the Lord had the man of God, Ezekiel, walk before the people. So he was warning them. Uh, dig a hole in the wall to warn them about what's going to happen. Because things right now, Ezekiel was carrying a bag, which means he was moving. He was moving something, showing what was about to happen to them. Church, right now, stuff is shifting. Things are moving because this world is moving to captivity. Okay. And see, God, the, the, the Lord had the man of God walk before the people. But there was some false prophets in the old time saying, Oh, what he's preaching, what he's saying, it is for a distant time. It's not going to happen no time soon. It's many years off. And this is what the Lord said. Had the, This is what the Lord had that man of God said to the people that be, that was believing the, the false prophet. Okay. The Lord said, the Lord spoke heavy in this vision. The Lord said, he, he said, I am silencing that proverb because today, church, we have a many false prophets today saying the Lord is not coming no time soon. That he's not coming no time soon. That everything going to go on as it always did. Man. Mm -mm -mm. And the Lord said, I am killing that proverb. Mm -mm. I am silencing that proverb. He said, thus says the Lord, I'm silencing that proverb. Everything that I have spoken, it will be done. Mm -mm -mm. It will be done. Let me find the church. This is what the Lord wants me to say. 
This is what the Lord, he said, Ezekiel 12, 21, because after the Lord had the man of God walk to warn them on what's going to happen to them, some did not believe because of the false prophet that was saying, hey, he's speaking them afar of time. This is what the Lord said. Hear this church. Thus says the Lord, the, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man. What is this proverb you have in the land of Israel? The days go by and every vision come to nothing. So say to them, Jesus, mm, mm, mm. this is what the sovereign Lord says. I am going to put an end to this proverb and they will be no longer a quote in it. Quote. They will no longer quote it in Israel. God, mm, 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 wow. Say to them, the days are near when every vision will be fulfilled. Mm, mm, mm. You know what the Lord is saying? Today, the Lord said, I am silencing that proverb. Everything that I have spoken in regards to the return of the Lord Christ Jesus will be performed. There will be no more delay. I am silencing this proverb what man have spoken. For there will be no more false vision or flattering div divination among the people of Israel. You know what they're saying? Church, there will be no more flattering divinations, divinations. The Lord is going to silence this proverb. The Lord is coming quickly, church. Those who do wickedly, they will do wickedly. Those, th those who do wickedly, they will do wickedly. Those who be righteous, they will be righteous. Those who be righteous, they will obey the testimony of Christ Jesus. Church, hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. When you hear a man saying Jesus is far off, don't believe it. For the Lord is the Lord is silencing that proverb. The Lord Christ Jesus is near. Hear what the Lord is saying to the church. But I, the Lord, will speak what I will, and it shall be fulfilled without delay. Jesus. For in your days, you rebellious house, I will fulfill whatever I say, declares the sovereign Lord. The Lord, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, the house of Israel is saying the vision he sees it for many years from now. And he prophesied about a distant future. Hear what the Lord is saying, church. Therefore, say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. None of my words will be late. None of my words will be delayed any longer. Whatever I say will be fulfilled, declares the Lord, declares the sovereign Lord. Church, hear what the Spirit saying to the church. The Lord woke me up in a vision. People was walking around shackles and the man of God was digging a hole in the wall. And as I get to work, the Holy Spirit started speaking to me. He said, son, go to the book of Ezekiel. And as I go to the book of Ezekiel, the Lord started showing me that this world is going to captivity. That Christ Jesus is coming back soon to judge all this unrighteousness that finna take place. That there will be no more delay, says the sovereign Lord, that I'm coming to this. I'm coming to perform my word quickly. There will be no more delay, says the Lord God Almighty. What do we say then? What do we say, church? What do we say? Obey the gospel because through Christ Jesus, we have received a great inheritance, sonship in the kingdom of heaven. Well, we no longer have to experience the wrath of God, but we can experience the glory of God and peace and joy forever. So, church, let us pursue obedience and not unrighteousness because unrighteousness, un unrighteousness won't get us into the kingdom of heaven, but get us wrath. But righteousness will get us peace with God and made right with God through the testimony of Christ Jesus and that being made right and whole in him. Cause us to be perfect as he is, as he is perfect. And as he is perfect, we are able to enter the perfect glory of God because we have been deemed right because we have the righteousness of Christ Jesus. OK. This is very important, church. This is very important. Let's go to Hebrews 12, 16. Let's go to Hebrews 12, 16. This is very important. Very important church. Church, I'm talking about he showed this. It was so vivid, man. And it was so heavy, man. Now it's the time to be faithful to the Lord. We should have been faithful to the Lord. Now it's the time that there's a line in the sand. Jesus. The Lord Jesus have drawn a line in the sand. And you either with him or against him. Whoever not with him, whoever don't gather with him, scatters. Church is that time, church. What side will we be on? Okay. What side will we be on? Give me one second, church. 
Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, 16. For the Lord, let me see. Okay. See that no one is sexually immoral or see that no one is sexually immoral or godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance, his inheritance right as the oldest son. Now, this is the story Esau and Jacob, when Jacob, right in the book of Hebrews, is quoting from the Old Testament. The writer's quoting from the Old Testament about Jacob and Esau because Esau had came in the house one day. From hunting, he was he was in uh, he was hungry, dire need. Uh, well, he let me say it this way: he came in the house hungry, and Jacob was cooking, and he's so hungry, so focused on the meal right in front of him that he sold his birthright. He sold something that were precious just to get a right now fix. Church, we have a birthright. We have an inheritance. And that inheritance comes through the testimony of Christ Jesus by faith in him. That through faith in him, we have received entrance into the kingdom of heaven through adoption of sonships to the Father in heaven. That through him, we are called sons and daughters of God that we can dwell in his presence forever. Church, let us not give that away because we want to right now fix in this world. Let us not give that away because we because we conform to this world or chasing the things in this world or we valuing we are valuing valuing the things of this world more than our relationship with God Almighty. God. Let us not sell our birthright because we want this earth that will pass away. Instead of the kingdom of heaven that endures forever. Let us not sell our birthright and be deceived into thinking that this world is better when the glory of God is far greater when this world is passing away. Church, let us not trade heaven for earth because this earth is passing away, but heaven will last forever. Okay, let us not be like Esau. Because if you notice, he sold something precious, his birthright, for something physical. Church, let not our physical possession, the physical things of this world become idols. That it would cause us to conform to this world. When we have received a great inheritance through Christ Jesus. For the wrath of God will be on us severely. If we reject such a great salvation that have, that have been performed uh, in front of us through many signs and wonders through Christ Jesus and minister to us unto the holy minister unto us by the holy angels. OK. Church, this is very important. This is very important. Because Esau wept, he wept. Because he had sold his birthright. For a quick fix when it's all said and done. Because when you read this story, Esau wept because he had lost everything. Mm -hmm. Church, be not deceived now, getting everything now, because there will be a greatest change. In the book of Luke 16, there was a rich man and a beggar. Both of them died. One was in torment and one was in the kingdom of heaven. And Abraham said, son, in your life, you receive good thing. In his life, he suffered. But now he's being comforted and now you're in torment. Church, we should rather suffer now for the glory of God and experience the fruitfulness and the joy forever in heaven. For this present suffering and nothing compared to the joy that is stored up for us in Christ Jesus. So this suffering right now is nothing compared to the glory that we have in Christ Jesus. So let us not now. Indulge in the things of this world and miss the true riches that come from the kingdom of heaven. OK, this is very important. Church, this is very important because Esau wept. Because he lost everything. All because he wanted something right now. Jesus said. That those who do not have faith in him, that they will be cast into the outer darkness where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
Why? Because they rejected a great salvation. They gave away their birthright. Jesus. They did not receive the birthright that I had given them through my testimony that if they would just have believed, they would have experienced the, um, the unimaginable, the, the unimaginable peace that I can get them daily, but also this life that I have created for those who are faithful, that they will live with me forever and will hunger no more and will thirst no more. And I will take care of them and I will lead them to the tree of life where they will drink freely, says the Lord. Church, true, true riches come from God, not from the earth. The things of this earth perish, but the things that come from heaven endures forever. Therefore, if we live in Christ, Christ live in us, we live forever because he lived forever. For the mystery of the Lord, the mystery, right? Christ in us, the hope of glory. Therefore, if Christ in us, the hope of glory is manifested in us through his testimony. And that testimony causes the rest in, in the glory to come because we were faithful to his will. Okay. Church, right now we're in a time. Well, we can't be partially in. We got to be all in. Because if you partially, if you partially trying to be in, you won't endure to the end. But if you all in, if you all in, you will endure. Because you have true faith. And faith in Christ Jesus did not put us to shame because he is faithful to finish what he started. Okay. Okay. Now it's not the time to partially obey the gospel. It's time for us to fully obey the gospel. Why? Because the Lord have commanded us to. Okay. First Corinthians 15, one through four. Let's check it out, church. First Corinthians 15, one through four. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you receive and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly, Jesus, to the word that I have preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. Man. That was a strong statement what the brother Paul has said through the Holy Spirit. Let's slow it down. He said, now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you. Which you received and on which you have taken your stand by this gospel that I have preached what the Paul is saying. If you hold firmly to the word that I preach. Oh, excuse me. Let me, let me, let me repeat this. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you take and stand by the gospel. You by the gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word that I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. So if I don't hold fast to what I have received, then I have believed in vain. Why, Lord? Because salvation is given freely, but we also have to obey that salvation. Because the race is not given to the one that started, but the one who finished it. Paul said, if you don't hold firm to it. Then you have believed in vain. Man. Mm -hmm. What are you saying, Lord? That you have to walk with the Lord, right? Be in fellowship with the Lord through the Holy Spirit. Being steadfast in the word that you have received according to the gospel. Not conforming to the world, but conforming to his presence. Jesus. Excuse me. Not conforming to this world, but yielding to his presence. And as you yield to his presence, his presence conform you to his righteousness through the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. The only way to be saved if if is if we hold fast to the testimony that we have received. We can't earn salvation because Jesus gave it to us freely. But that free salvation that we have received have to be accompanied by obedience because obedience calls us to be steadfast in what we have received. It causes us to stand firm. On what we have believed. See, obedience calls you to stand firm on the testimony of Christ Jesus. 
Because if you don't stand firm, then you will fall away. Why? Because you did not yield to the Holy Spirit. When we don't, we can't carry out the gospel by ourselves. We can't. Therefore, if we don't yield to the Holy Spirit, we cannot be steadfast. We cannot be steadfast. The Holy Spirit helps us stand firm on the gospel. But if we don't yield to the Holy Spirit, see, even with the Holy Spirit, we got a choice of free will. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are gentlemen. They're not going to force themselves on nobody. They're going, they, will never override, they will never override our free will. Therefore, they will always give us a choice to choose to obey, choose a choose choose to obey or disobey. Okay. So therefore, let us hold, let us, let us be firm in what we have believed by obeying the Holy Spirit. Because if we don't hold firm on what we believe, we will fall away. And as we fall away, we reject a great salvation because we did not believe in his testimony. Because belief is not just Knowing, but belief is also, excuse me, unbelief is not just if you don't believe, but unbelief is when you disobey what you believe. Excuse me, disbelief also is when you disobey what you have heard or received. And we have heard and we have received the gospel. Look what Paul said. Now, brethren, I want to remind you of the gospel you have preached and what you have received. So I'm reminding you on what you have received. But what you have received, you have to stand on because if you don't stand on it, it is no use to you. If you don't stand on what I have given you, then you have believed in vain. Man. Why? Because steadfastness in the gospel produces the righteousness of God because in steadfastness, the Holy Spirit works in you because steadfastness is a part of the Holy Spirit. When we don't yield to the Holy Spirit, we are rejecting the power that causes us to endure. And when we reject the power that causes that causes us to endure, as a result, we don't stand firm by our own choice. Mm -hmm. That's tough. So, church, let us be steadfast by yielding to the Holy Spirit. For the Lord Christ Jesus is the name above all names. When you hear the name of Jesus, you hear the Father. When you hear the name of Jesus, you hear the Holy Spirit. When you have, excuse me, you hear the Son. When you hear the name of Jesus, you hear the Holy Spirit. Christ Jesus is the Son of God. He is God Almighty. He is coming soon to judge all unrighteousness. All, to judge all unrighteousness. He is coming back with all authority that all authority that the Father had given him. And he's coming back to look to retrieve those who have been longing to see him, who have been faithful to his testimony, and who don't want part in this world, but want part in the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Church, this is all I have for you today. I pray that it was a blessing to you. I pray that it increased your faith. And I pray that it helped you fix your eyes on Jesus, church, because the Lord is coming soon. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for speaking to us today, Lord. We thank you for living, never letting us go, Lord. Lord, help us to obey your word. Help us to walk right with you. Help us to seek your face, Lord. Continue to remind us of everything you have said to us through your Holy Spirit. Teach us more truth about who you are, Lord. Lord, we want to say thank you for being such a great Lord. A great savior. A great husband to your church that you've given all to retrieve her to yourself. Father. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, you are the one and only true God. And we just want to say thank you for your big heart towards us. May we humble ourselves in your presence. May we seek your face, Lord. Man, Lord, may we turn for unrighteousness, Lord.
May we turn from all unrighteousness, Lord, and pursue righteousness that will well up into eternal life, Lord. May the church be awakened in this hour, Lord, because we want to please your heart. And we want to see your glorious face, Lord. Lord, we pray that this great longing, we pray that this great longing in our heart will drive us to your feet because we really love you, Lord. Set us free, Lord. Teach us your way, oh Lord. Even if it costs us everything, even if it costs us a relationship, even if it costs us a job, Lord, even if it costs us everything, may you be glorified because in you, it's the hope of glory. And in you, it's the greater resurrection. And in you, all things live and we want to live, Lord. Now, daily, in your presence, and also forevermore in the life to, in the life to come. Lord God, we love you so much and we thank you for all that you do and all that you bring and all that you pour out, Lord God. In Jesus' precious, holy, in Master's name, I pray, Lord God. And if you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for leading us to this place. Fill me up with your spirit. Teach me to walk in your ways. I put my trust in you for salvation. I believe. We believe. Excuse me. I believe that you sent your one and only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my risen Savior. I repent of my sins. God, forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' person, I will pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. If you meant that prayer from the bottom of your heart, you did the best thing you could ever do in your life. Heaven is celebrating. They say whenever a sinner repents, heaven rejoices. Right now they are celebrating having a party because you have came home. Now a lot of be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. The Lord is coming soon. And um, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you to a biblical gathering. And uh, I, I, because the, the the walk of the believer was created to walk among brothers and sisters. So allow the Holy Spirit to guide you to that place because there are many people teaching falsely, but there are some churches teaching the truth. They really love Jesus. And, um, and I know a few of them. So I just pray that you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you into all righteousness through True brothers and sisters, most importantly, through the spirit of God, who will reveal the glory of God in Christ Jesus to you. OK. Church, this is all I have for you, and I pray that it's a blessing to you, and I pray that it guide your heart to the feet of Jesus. Church, remember, the Lord Christ Jesus love us so much, church. Remember that. See you next time, beloved. Love you. Church, I thank you so much for tuning in to Holy Spirit Radio. Thank you so much for tuning in to Holy Spirit Radio. I pray that you prevail in righteousness. I pray that you prevail in love for Christ. I pray that, you, I pray that we increase in love for Christ. Because that love keeps us from sinning against His will. Church, I pray that His righteousness, His will will become our food. That we will obey Him even unto death. But He is with us, church. He always is and always will be. Of the matrimony. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not even death, because if we believe, we will forever. It's well forever in His will. Church, let's remember it's time for us to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And church, we're not waiting for the end time to get here. Because the end is now. Church, we're not waiting for the end time to get here.